welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. Yesterday, we broke down potential dark horse teams from each of the Power Five conferences, teams that maybe could exceed their expectations in 2023. Today, we're doing the exact same thing, except we're looking at teams that can maybe disappoint from each of the Power Five conferences, teams that are entering 2023 with sky-high expectations but could very well fall short of those expectations. Definitely don't want to be on this list. And just because you're on the list doesn't mean it's going to happen. But these are teams that very well could fall flat on their face this upcoming college football season. So welcome back to the Gridiron Expert, guys. We're ready to discuss and debate this topic with you. As always, please continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and check out everything down in the description below, including our official website, thegridironexpert.com, guys. Tons of exclusive content and offers over there that you do not want to miss out on because here at the Gridiron Expert, college football never dies. The season never ends here at the Gridiron Expert. We want you to become a part of that. We want you to become a part of our conversation. We want you to take advantage of that. We want you to become a part of our GE Nation and what we're building here. And you can do that by liking, commenting, subscribing, hitting that notification button as well so you don't miss out on any of our future content going forward, including predictions for every single college football team coming up here in just a few months. And that includes game-by-game -game predictions for every team that we're about to list today. We may agree that they fall flat on their face or maybe... They don't. Time will tell. All right, let's jump into this. Teams that could disappoint. One team from each Power 5 conference that has high expectations but could fall a little bit short of those. SEC, let's start there. How about we start with the reigning SEC West champions in LSU. Fantastic year for Brian Kelly in year one. I mean, he exceeded expectations in Baton Rouge last year. And, you know, LSU is a, is a program that expects to win, and they expect to win consistently. And after the slow start, including a shocking loss to Florida State, LSU fans were kind of getting a little upset with that. But then they got hot. They finished the year 10-4. and four. They won the SEC West. They upset Alabama in Death Valley. And now heading into this year, they return practically everyone offensively, including their star quarterback in Jaden Daniels. But the defense could be a bit of a concern. LSU only returned 60% of their production back on the defensive side of the ball. And you look at LSU's schedule. You know, the talent is there. This is the team that knows they can beat Alabama. This is the team that has high expectations and probably will be a preseason top 10 team. But you look at who they play early on. One or two losses for LSU ruins their season, ruins their chances of contending for a playoff berth uh, or, for, or for winning the SEC West. You lose a couple conference games there, you're done. They open the season in Orlando against a very good Florida State team. That very well could be a top 10 matchup to begin the year. They then travel to Starkville to take on Mississippi State. Never easy to play. Uh, in Stark Vegas. Then they host Arkansas, an Arkansas team that nearly beat LSU last year with no quarterback. You know, Arkansas did not have Malik Hornsby, uh, excuse me, did not have KJ Jefferson, had to start Malik Hornsby and Cade Fortin and nearly beat LSU, only losing 13 to 10. Then LSU travels to Ole Miss, that electric Ole Miss offense that LSU shut down Death Valley, but now has to go to Oxford. And then they travel to Missouri, a team that very well could be a sleeper team in the SEC. All those teams are ones that LSU has to play within the first six weeks. If LSU loses one game there, they're in trouble because later in the year, they have to go to Alabama in the first game of November. First game of November, they have to go to Alabama. So you lose that game early on and you lose Alabama. That's two losses, so you're probably not winning the West. You're probably not going to the playoff. Things are looking dangerous. You lose two games early on, those first six games. Season's done in terms of a repeat West title, uh, in terms of going to the playoff, things like that. So LSU has these sky-high expectations, but the defense could be a concern and the schedule could be a major concern as well and could prevent the Tigers from repeating the success they had in 2022. Over in the ACC, North Carolina. This is a team that went 9-5 and five last year. They won the Coastal Division, made the ACC Championship, and played Clemson. And, of course, enters the year with tons of hype and excitement because of one guy, Drake May, one of the best quarterbacks in the entire country. Everybody has sky-high expectations for the Tar Heels once again. But this is a team that returns just 68% of their production. And the defense was absolutely terrible in 2022. And right now, there's really no reason to believe that they're going to be significantly better in 2023. No reason to believe that right now. When you look at their schedule, brutal first three games. They open up in Charlotte against South Carolina. Uh, obviously, a South Carolina team that was very good last year under Shane Beamer and Spencer Rattler. They have host Appalachian State. Last year, UNC App State had a game for the ages. And then Minnesota in the non-conference. So those first three games there, it wouldn't be a shock to see North Carolina start one and two. That's not out of the realm of possibility. So tough three games to really see what the Tar Heels are made of, but a slow start could really end any hype that they had within the first three weeks. 
ACC play isn't terrible, but they still have to travel to Pittsburgh and they still have to travel to Clemson. So that is a, a tough slate right there in and of itself. There also are no divisions in the ACC this year. So the ACC is just taking the top two teams to go to the ACC championship game. So, you know, North Carolina is not going to benefit from a weak coastal division like they had last year. They're going to have to go up against Clemson, Florida State, Miami possibly. You know, a lot of teams out there that are going to be challenging for that top two spot, North Carolina may not be one of them. And another nine-win season might not be in the cards with such a difficult schedule and a pretty bad defense. Over in the Big 12, this one is obvious. A team that can maybe disappoint or fall short of expectations, TCU. It, it's easy. There, there's no reason to believe that TCU is going to repeat the regular, undefeated regular season like they had last year. It's just not going to happen. This was a team that went 13-2 and last year. They were a national runner-up. It was an amazing season for the Horned Frogs. A season where last year when I predicted TCU, had nowhere close. I, I fell flat on my face when I predicted TCU last year. But I think everybody else did too. No one expected the Horned Frogs to be that good. But now they lose Max Duggan. They lose Kendra Miller. They use Quentin Johnston at wide receiver. They lose their star offensive coordinator and Garrett Riley off to Clemson. This is a TCU team that certainly will still be in contention for a Big 12 title. There's no doubt about it. They're not going to fall completely off the face of the earth. But they're not going to go on to go undefeated again and maybe make the college football playoff. They have to go to Iowa State. They have to go to Kansas State, to Texas Tech, to Oklahoma. The uh, road slate, especially the back half of the schedule, is absolutely brutal for the Horned Frogs. So they're not going to replicate their 9-0 conference mark like last year. Uh, and this, it's just not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. This is a team that could start 5-0. and The first half of the schedule is very, very favorable, but the back half is brutal, could stack up a few losses that could ultimately keep them out of the Big 12 championship game, which many fans would view as a disappointment, but it's a season and a, and a step back that should be expected after such a great 2022 season. Over in the Big Ten, here's a big dog, Ohio State. You know, we did a video on this just a couple days ago. Is Ryan Day on the hot seat? Should he be worried about his job with the Buckeyes, considering that he has yet to produce a national title in four years, that he has only been to one national championship in four years, that he's losing recruits uh, from the state of Ohio to Michigan, that he's lost to Michigan each of the last two years? It sounds crazy to say that statement alone. It says It's crazy to say that Ohio State could disappoint this year, but what are the expectations at Ohio State? The expectations are to win championships, or to beat Michigan, to win titles, to make the playoff. That might not happen this year. They have a brand new quarterback. Probably going to be Kyle McCord, but they got to break in a new quarterback. Got a lot of new wide receivers coming in. They have a defense that was not very good towards the end of last year that needs some improvement. And then you've got a schedule that is brutal. They have to go to Notre Dame. They get to host Penn State, who's dangerous. They have to go to Wisconsin. Then they have to go to Michigan, who has blown out the Buckeyes each of the last two years. They are no longer the top dog in the Big Ten. They're no longer the top dog even in the Big Ten East. So Ohio State, they expect to win championships. They might not even make the Big Ten championship this year with so many key new pieces and such a tough schedule. It's bottom line, that's how it is. Two losses for Ohio State keeps them out of the Big Ten title. It keeps them out of the college football playoff. One loss, they might be able to sneak in kind of like they did last year, but that still would be a disappointment for many in Columbus. This is a team that, again, has sky-high expectations. It'll be a preseason top five team. Could fall short of expectations again in 2023. And finally, over in the Pac-12, we have Oregon. Yeah, we're losing some big names here. Big names here that could disappoint in this upcoming season. An Oregon team that went 10-3 and last year, 7-2 and in conference play, but a team that might not even come close to winning 10 games. They went 9-3 and in the regular season, won their bowl game over North Carolina. Yes, we know they returned their star quarterback in Bo Nix. That's fantastic. They lose their star offensive coordinator in Kenny Dillingham, who helped develop Bo Nix, not just at Oregon, but also at Auburn. They also have a lot of questions on both sides of the ball. Got Bo Nix. Who's there to help him? The defense is there. Dan Lanning's a defensive-minded coach. Well, the defense didn't look all that great at times last year. Oregon returns just 65% of their total production from last year, and the schedule is absolutely brutal. Week two, they go to Texas Tech, a very, very good Texas Tech team that could be a sleeper in the Big 12 this year. They have to go to Washington. They have to go to Utah. This year, they draw USC. They have to go to Arizona State to face Kenny Dillingham, the new head coach of the Sun Devils. And, of course, they host Oregon State, who won 10 games last year. The road, state, road slate is absolutely brutal, and their college football playoff hopes very well could come to an end by the end of week two. If they drop that game to Texas Tech, it's all over. Okay, I don't expect Oregon to run the rest of the way. I don't expect them to win their last 10 games, especially with road games at Washington and at Utah and a game against Caleb Williams and USC. It's going to be tough. So Oregon has expectations to win a Pac-12 title. They have expectations to make the playoffs. 
that might be a little far-fetched with so many questions and such a tough slate on deck. But there you go, guys. Five teams, one from each of the Power Five conferences that could fall very well short of their sky-high expectations during 2023. Of course, we're not predicting that today, but when you look at the numbers and when you look at what these teams are up against, it's going to be a tough road in 2023 to reach the expectations set by the media, set by the fans. We'll be predicting these records here in just a few months. You don't want to miss out on that, but let us know below. Will these teams disappoint? Are we crazy? What are some other teams that could disappoint? We want to hear from you. We want to get the discussion going. Make sure to comment and bring it back here tomorrow at The Gridiron Expert. So guys, as always, thank you so much for watching us here at The Gridiron Expert on YouTube. We're so glad that you could join us today. Please continue to like, to comment, subscribe, share the video, check out everything down in the description below, including our website, thegridironexpert.com, because again, here at The Gridiron Expert, college football never dies. The season never, ever ends, and we want you to become a part of our GE Nation. And once again, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on The Gridiron Expert. Oh, 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 oh,